What's up guys, we're here with another Marvel Strike Force video and in this video we are going to take a look at my first run on the Death Scourge. This is a run that you will, you will easily obtain 1 million points and I use this run to see if my theory crafted and suggested teams would work or not. As you guys know, I didn't have access to the test server like other people, so I was very curious if the teams that I suggested in one of my videos, if they were all going to work or not. So in this video, we are going to take exactly a look at those teams in action. We are going to see each of the nodes and uh, we are going to also pay attention to the targets I focused, the kill order, and also maybe some mistakes I made throughout the journey. So in case you are curious, the video is this one right here. Use them, the official Dead Sea, the nodes reveal the death scourge nodes revealed and uh, which teams i'm going to use if you check out this video which has 5000 views you are going to see that uh, the teams that i suggested here are the teams that i'm going to use on this video okay so with that said as always if you like the information on this video make sure to share it with your friends on facebook and discord if you are new to my channel make sure to subscribe for more marvel strike force content and make sure you smash that like button okay so in terms of the scourges that we are going to use we are going to use this the super soldier serum that increases the stats of the minions by 30 percent we are going to use this scourge as well rise anew that will allow minions to revive remember that it's not only the minions on your side of the field it's also on the enemy side and then there is another scourge here that i cannot show you right now but it allows you to flip negative effects into positive effects only on minions so with these three scourges it's going to be extremely easy for you to get 1 million points on difficulty 8 and with that said let's get started and let's take a look at these nodes Okay, so here we go, we have node number one, and we are using exactly the team I suggested, exactly the position of the characters. There are a few things that I want to talk about, but it has to be in an upcoming video. In case you want to do difficulty nine, difficulty 9 instead of difficulty 8. So if you want to get a score over 2 million points, maybe even over 3 million points, you definitely want to make sure that you stay tuned for that upcoming video, which will have some important notes that you need to be aware of in case you want to do such a high difficulty okay so let's take a look at this team in action once again node number one and uh, we are going to play on two times speed because the biggest problem with the node number one and the node number two is that we have very low damage output so even that the team has a lot of survivability even that the team takes a lot of turns and so on the damage output unfortunately is not the best okay so my minions they are at uh, level 75 gear tier 14 and they only have three t4s that's going to be the infector special aim infector special then we have the aim researcher passive and the aim assault passive and uh, the the basis of this team is that uh, anytime a negative effect is applied to an aim character you keep getting turn meter and turn meter and turn meter which allow your team to go extremely fast and any kind of bleed effects that they have they will be removed by aim researcher even be before the the scourges activates the ones that flip negative effects into positive effects okay so in terms of priority targets you want to focus on strange supreme because he's going to revive characters and you don't want that then you want to focus on toad and after Toad, you can focus on Symbiote Spider-Man just because he does a little bit too much damage and he has a stun. You want to avoid the characters being alive that have a stun. The, the blob, for now, you can ignore it on uh, 1 million runs. You don't need the blob to be like uh, super huge. And, uh, and uh, therefore, you should focus on Toad. Just to make sure that you have enough skirmishers to remove the taunts from the blob uh, faster this is one thing that we are going to talk about in the, in this upcoming video for the higher scourges is that uh, if you change the isolate from researcher to skirmisher it might be more helpful because aim security she's just way too slow in order to be an uh, effective skirmisher okay so now we have the magneto we have all the characters packed together and uh, as i said this is going to be great for the aim team because now aim assault is going to give turn meter for all the aim characters and uh, aim 
effector is going to give counters to all the characters. So you can see all those counters right there uh, on top of everyone. I apologize because I have a, a different screen here on top. And uh, and with that, uh, like the, the counters are non-stopping. That will increase your damage output. So instead of having direct damage, you have damage coming out from the counters. And uh, that's going to compensate, uh, uh, of course, as soon as Magneto shows up. Okay, so on uh, this second wave of the first node, the enemies that you want to focus on is Magneto because he keeps giving speed up to the Juggernaut and then the Juggernaut will be able to taunt more often and you don't want that. After that, after you get rid of Magneto, you can focus on Mordo and you can also focus on Philovel. And, uh, and then you just have the Sabertooth and you have to finish off uh, the Juggernaut and that's it. The more you attack the Juggernaut, the worse, so just ignore the Juggernaut. The same goes for the Blob, at least at these lower difficulties. Okay, so that was node number one and now let's take a look at uh, node number two. Okay, so here we go for node number two. We have uh, once again aim team with uh, Mark LT. And uh, I think this is going to be one of the best teams. Yes, I have heard about the Ravagers. The Ravagers, they only make sense if uh, you already have them geared up. Otherwise, they are going to be just as good as any other minion team. So, in terms of the enemies that uh, you want to destroy as fast as possible, one of them is going to be a sentry because of what he's doing right now. He's applying evades to the enemies, he's putting them on stealth, and you don't want any of that. Now, based on the other enemies, you want to stop characters with a slow and you want to stop characters with a turn rewind. So after you are done with the end sentry, you want to focus on uh, Vulture. You want to focus on Vulture, I think that's going to be very important. And then you want to focus on Swarm. After you are done with those two characters, it's not very important who you get rid of. But uh, you might focus on Rhino because he's going to have a taunt. So if you don't have enough skirmishers, you have to deal with that taunt and then uh, you kind of want to deal with Venom just because he's applying heal block to you and while it's not a problem uh, because you can flip that, that heal block uh, into that proof you still don't want to have uh, deal block around because there will be a lot of mystiques coming up uh, on the next wave if I remember correctly and uh, you, you want to make sure that uh, you don't have ability blocks because you might get some surprise Okay, so there we go, we destroy the Vulture, we destroy the Rhino, we destroy Swarm, and uh, now we just go slowly after the, the Symbiotes. Let's see which enemies we are going to fa face next, because I don't remember. Okay, so there we go. Now we have uh, the Deadpool, we have Domino, and we have uh, Magic. So Magic, she's able to apply the Turn Rewind, but it's only on her special, in a, and it's a very long cooldown. So it's not something that you really have to, to rush for. And uh, then we have uh, Phantom X, which has a Taunt. And that Taunt is very, very annoying. So in terms of priority characters, I think the best one to destroy right away is Domino. And the reason why is because if you destroy Nom Domino, you are going to be able to destroy Deadpool. If you don't destroy Domino, you can kill multiple times Deadpool and you will always keep uh, coming back. So Domino first, Deadpool second. And then after that, you want to remove the Taunt from uh, Phantom X. And you can finish off your job with the Deadpool, and then you go after Magic. Phantom X right now, not very important, just remove his taunt, and he's super slow, so it's not going to be relevant enough to prioritize him as a target. Okay, so based on that, I'm going after Magic, because she applies Barrier to her allies, and I don't need that, and she also clears positive effects, so you don't want that as well. You don't want her to clear the positive effects away from your team with their basic attack. Okay, so here we go. I'm uh, removing Phantom X because I don't want to deal with this taunt anymore. And uh, once again, I don't remember what, which is are going to be the next enemies on this wave. But as you can see, it's pretty easy so far. Okay, so there we go. We have the Drax. So once again, it's going to be important to have uh, Aim Researcher as a Skirmisher instead of a Healer. Just to make sure that uh, you remove all those towns because the towns are quite annoying and there is a lot of healing going on here. So after you remove Drax or after you remove the town, you want to go after Star-Lord and you also go after Rocket because they do a lot of burst damage and uh, it might be the case that uh, 
if your characters are not strong enough or if you are doing difficulty nine, the damage that uh, they output might be enough to one shot of one of your characters and uh, you don't want that. Or uh, maybe it's not even relevant because you have the revival. So even if they one shot one of your characters, maybe it's not a big deal. And uh, and yeah, but still, but still, Star Lord at least you want to get rid for sure because he's giving energy to the other characters. And the Moon Dragon she can be very very annoying, clearing your positive effects away, which uh, is not good. And she also keeps healing the team, which is not good as well. Interesting fact is that Drax is. Moon Dragon's father, so it's kind of funny that we have both of them together in uh, in the same node. And I think Mantis, she's also the wife of Drax or something like that. So having all these characters together, it definitely has some lore implications, with, uh, which makes it hilarious. I just wish they had like a map in space to 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 have so many mystic uh, to have so many cosmic characters. Okay, so there we go. That was node number two with uh, the aim team plus Mark LT, which was the team I suggested on my video a week ago without having the test server. Okay, so now let's take a look at node number three. This is another team that I suggested and uh, I'm gonna put this on half speed because if I put it on two times speed, it's gonna be way too fast. This team is just beyond amazing, like I expected, of course. And uh, it works with Eternals and Kestrel plus Captain America and Captain Sam. Obviously, what we are going to do with Captain America and Captain Sam is giving energy to the Eternals. And of course, as I expected, it's going to work uh, perfectly. And this is why you don't need test server. You can just theorycraft your t these teams with uh, the little information we have. Okay, so all of, these, all of those characters spawn with defense up because there is an enemy Shuri. And Shuri will always go before uh, Ikaris. So we are going to use this ultimate, we are going to flip all those defense ups into defense downs and uh, we are going to do tons and tons of, and, uh, tons and tons of damage to the enemies and uh, then Kestrel is going to capitalize on us flipping all those defense ups into defense downs. This is why this team is so good. After that, we are going to use uh, Captain America and Captain Sam special in order to get enough energy for us to to do all the abilities from the Eternals again. So, as you can see, after I destroy all those characters, I try to play it a little bit slowly so I can get uh, more energy on Icarus. And as you can see, I got all the energy I needed on Icarus and this node was completely destroyed. So now I'm not even going to cut it because as you guys can see, like this is so fast that uh, <laughs> no times for breaks between node number three and node number four. And uh, once again, we are going to use the same team and uh, we are going to destroy those enemies. So let's see if we move on from this node. There we go. I really like that skin for Captain America. It looks so OG, in my opinion. It's the perfect skin for him. Uh, maybe it's because I'm too old and I remember the Captain America from like the, the 60s or 70s or whatever. Okay, so in this node, we have uh, several summoners. We have uh, Nick Fury and we also have Mr. Sinister. So once again, the Eternals are going to be strong against uh, this node because they can capitalize on uh, those early summons from Nick Fury. Then uh, we have uh, Omega Red, which is not going to be a problem for us. We have uh, Cersei with the stun. We have Kestrel that can also do tons of damage. And uh, all of them have superior speed to Omega Red. So it's not going to be a problem for us to defeat uh, this node. Let's start now with node number four. I had to, to skip a little bit because I went to the arena before the, the scourge, the, before the, the node four. And this is why I had to jump back and forth a little bit. But yeah, the number one in the arena, congratulations, thank you very much. So let's now do finally node number four on the, the death scourge. So we are using the same team. There is nothing special about it. Like I said, Captain America and Captain Sam, they completely fill up the energy of uh, Icarus and Cersei. And uh, now with... Uh, oh, we don't, have, we don't even have the minions. This is because I'm using Kestrel. So if your Icarus is not as strong as mine, then uh, you maybe want to skip on the Kestrel train and use some other character instead that uh, does not stop summons. Otherwise, your your uh, 
Icarus will not be able to double tap. But in this specific situation, my Icarus is so strong that it was not a problem. Then with the Cersei, we could have stunned Omega Red, not a problem as well. We finished him off with Kestrel, and now once again, I'm going to use the abilities from Captain Sam and Captain America in order to replenish their energy. The third wave of the enemy spawn, we have uh, Gambit, we have uh, also Zemo. I like to destroy Zemo as fast as possible. And then I stun uh, Gambit with uh, the special of Cersei. And I use Castle to attack the other side where Colin Wing and uh, Misty Knight are. And there we go. So node number three and node number four completely destroyed with the team I theory crafted. Okay, so now we are going to take a look at the node number five. Uh, this is going to be Wakanda and uh, this is going to be also Bionic Avengers. We have uh, Shuri and we have uh, part of uh, the Bionic Avengers team and the reason why we have the team like this is because we don't need Iron Man. Iron Man is not important on this node. He's way too slow, he's way too irrelevant. So I decided it was better to use uh, Shuri because she has the heal block and she also applies deflects to the team. And uh, as I theory crafted, V Vision would go after V Vision would go after the Hero Asgardian. Uh, what's her name? Uh, Mighty Thor, Lady Thor, or whatever you want to call it. And because of that, we are going to be able to flip the negative effects that Mighty Thor give to our team with V Vision. So that was extremely easy. When a second wave of the node number 5 drops, you want to focus on Ebony Maw. You don't want him to apply offense down to your team, but more important than that, you don't want him to apply slow to your team. Those slows from Ebony Maw are extremely problematic, and you also have a lot of hero controllers, and if any of those hero controllers are destroyed while Ebony Maw is on the field, he's going to apply immunity to the entire team, to the entire enemy team, and is also going to apply barrier to the entire enemy team. So you definitely want to avoid that. When uh, you destroy Ebony Maw, you can pretty much put on Auto Basic because there is nothing to worry about. Just focus on the characters with retaliation and uh, save. Make sure you have your ability blocks because you are going to need them for node number 10. Okay, so as you can see, here we go. The amount of damage that they are doing to us is not uh, that much. And uh, based on that, uh, we are just going to put on Auto Basic and it's pretty much done. Okay, so let's take a look at the non-legendary mutants. And as I said long time ago, the Marauders were going to be great against uh, these nodes. And the big surprise is that not only they are good against the node number 6, they are also going to be good against the node number 7. But because I suggested a different team for node number 7, we are just going to use the Marauders on node number 6. So as you can see, the power of my team is not that high. It doesn't require a huge investment. But once again, for the non-legendary mutant nodes, you have so many teams that it doesn't really matter which teams you are going to use. I'm just going to use the Marauders because, like I said, I suggested them and I thought that they were going to be very strong on these nodes. So let's get started. I like to use Strife in the middle just because I like to protect Mystique and Madeline Pryor and that's why both of those two girls stay in the corner. Okay, so I'm going to use the Taunt with the Strife and I try to one-shot here the... I tried one shot uh, Star Lord Tashala with Mystique Ultimate, but uh, if you want to do that, you might have to restart the node a few times because you kind of want uh, Captain America to, uh, you want uh, Spider Man to attack, or you want uh, one of the shield minions because that will turn rewind the, the enemies. But uh, unfortunately, it didn't happen. So I cloned Kingpin, and with Kingpin, I used uh, his special ability that summons additional characters with Taunt. And uh, with all these minions, we are able to use the Marauders completely offensively. And uh, therefore, we don't have to worry about Strife Taunting or anything like that. Okay, so with Mr. Sinister, I'm going to copy all those positive effects from Mystique to everyone else. One of them being the Evade. If Mystique was on any other position, you'd not be able to obtain uh, and keep those evades on your team. Now you're going to give defense up and offense up to everyone thanks to Kingpin and uh, that's that's great because as soon as you get those defense ups and offense ups you're not going to lose them anymore 
uh, because of Mr. Sinister, Mystique and Strife, the energy they give to each other, then giving buffs to each other and so on. Okay, so in terms of characters you want to destroy as fast as possible, OG Spider, uh, the first of all is Star-Lord T'Challa. That's the first character you need to get rid of. After that, you want to get rid of uh, OG Spider-Man because of his stun and slow. And then you want to make sure you get rid of uh, Kingpin. After that, after you are done with Kingpin, and whenever you get the second wave to go, you want to make sure that you destroy Taskmaster because he does a lot of damage and he also has a stun. The Black Widow, if you can destroy her early on, that's going to be nice, but uh, might not be the best option because she's just so fast and you have to prioritize Taskmaster first. After Taskmaster, you have to destroy Merc LT, and uh, then uh, you want to remove the towns from the different characters we are facing, Mark Riot Guard, uh, Hulk, you remove their towns and then you go after the damage. That's going to be Colin Wing, and uh, Mystique you see that she's quite great here because she's, she's removing the stealth from everyone, so that's going to be very convenient and that's why Mystique is so useful on this node. Once again I use the mind control and I use it this time on Spider-Man because he cannot dodge the mind control attacks and therefore we completely destroy him. Okay, so we are good to go, we're gonna finish up uh, this node and as I mentioned, it's not a, you don't need the Marauders to, to, to defeat this node because this node is just so easy, I just wanted to show that the Marauders are not trash and uh, they would be a great option for this specific node because there are so many good characters to clone, there are so many ways to play this node and especially the characters on stealth, uh, it's gonna be extremely easy for the Marauders. Okay, so we are done here, now we are going to take a look at node number 7 and we are going to use the super hybrid X-Men team that I suggested in my videos. Okay, so here we go, we have Colossus, Psylocke, Gambit, Beast and we have uh, Magic. This team, as I guess, is very very strong. My characters are also pretty geared up compared to the Marauders. They have 150,000 power, but uh, this is a more recent team. The Marauders, they are a decent team, but their rework was not that great. It was still super related with Alliance Wars defense, so uh, therefore they are not they are still not uh, like a meta team or anything like that, for example, like the Young Avengers are. Either way, you can see that uh, Gambit is just destroying the enemies. Gambit has become farmable recently and, uh, and you can see that it makes a big difference having a big Gambit. It, it just destroys the enemies. So in terms of enemies you want to focus on, you want to make sure you want to make sure that you stop Captain Sam from taunting. Just because it's annoying, it, it takes a long time to remove the taunt and you don't want to deal with that. We only have one, We don't. I don't think we even have any skirmisher here. So you really don't want to deal with the, the taunts from uh, Captain Sam. When uh, the second wave drops with Shuri, you kind of want to destroy Okoye. Then you want to destroy. Then you want to destroy Nakia, and then you want to destroy Shuri. Just get rid of those those what kind of characters. It's not necessary. They are quite annoying, and all those assists they are going to remove buffs from you, uh, unnecessary damage. So that's going to be the priority. Now, in terms of these minions, you should go after the Shield Assault because she's going to be the one that gives crits for uh, all the minions, and she's also going to give additional crit for the summons of. Uh, Maria Hill, so you really want to get rid of uh, Shield Assault as fast as possible. After that, uh, remove the Taunt, if you have more skirmishers than I have, it's not going to be a problem. And uh, then you want to deal with uh, Sharon Carter, because of uh, what she did just now. The, the stuns, the, the defense downs, the ability blocks, they are quite annoying. You, don't, you definitely don't want to deal with that, so the faster you deal with Sharon Carter, the better. Then you want to remove the minions and that's pretty much it. Mary Hill by herself, it's not a big problem. And as long as you don't have any characters with uh, deflect or any characters with block chance, Mary Hill is not able to do much. And Gambit can also apply heal block to the enemies and that will also stop Mary Hill. 
which is great. Okay, so those were the non-legendary mutants. Now let's take a look at the legendary mutants where we are going to use Archangel for the first time and also Magneto. Okay, so here we go for another number eight. This was another team that I suggested on my video from a week ago. We have Rogue, we have Omega Red, we have Morgan Le Fay, Archangel and Magneto. The reason why you want to have Magneto and Archangel, I explained it in my video, it's to blind Gambit and it's to blind a few of the enemy characters. And if you have Magneto and Archangel, Magneto is going to go faster and is going to blind the characters that are important to blind. Okay, so let's take a look at this team in action and see exactly that they work perfectly. We have a few problematic characters here with Ella and also with Gambit. And uh, with the ultimate of Morgan Le Fay, you want to attack a character that is not adjacent to Greg. Because if you attack a character that is adjacent to Greg, you might not be able to apply blind to your enemies. We also have a zombie Iron Man on the other side. So you kind of want to kill as many Gregs as possible because that's going to turn rewind the, the zombie Iron Man. And uh, you definitely don't want Zombie Iron Man to have turns because he's going to start applying Blitz to your team and that means that uh, after that the, your team is going to attack uh, itself and you don't want that, you definitely don't want that because you are going to use some of these characters on uh, the other upcoming nodes. Okay, so we destroy one of those Gregs, that's going to turn rewind the enemy Zombie Iron Man with uh, Omega Red on this specific situation, you can pretty much ability block whoever you want. I decided to ability block uh, Gambit just to make sure that he doesn't ability, ability blocks one of my characters. With, uh, with Rogue, with Rogue Special, you want to use it on Colossus to make sure that Colossus is not able to taunt because whenever an uh, X-Men character goes below 50% health, Colossus is going to taunt, so you definitely want to stop those taunts from Colossus with the special of Rogue because she applies the Disrupt with Trauma. Okay, so now we have uh, Squirrel Girl, we have two Zombies Iron Mans, we still have a Greg, and uh, we need to be very careful with those Zombie Iron Mans because once again, if they start applying Blitz to your team, that's going to cause a lot of problems to you. So I'm going to apply Slow on uh, Dazzler to make sure that uh, she doesn't have her turn anytime soon. And I try to rush on Dazzler because she's very, very annoying. She's like V-Vision, she's going to flip negative effects into positive effects and you don't want that. Now, with the Rogue and Morgan Le Fay, we completely destroyed that uh, Squirrel, we destroyed Miss Marvel, uh, which is a big, big problem. Miss Marvel, she's going to keep going to the towns and so on, and you don't want any of that. After I had the chance of attacking Squirrel Girl, I did just that, and the Zombie Iron Man's, as soon as you can, you should also try to destroy them, because you really don't want those bleeds and then the mind control on your team. Okay, so I Falcon Punch there, Phoenix with the Rogue Basic. I keep splash, uh, splash attacking the enemies to get some healing on uh, Archangel, even that I was not going to use him on the next node. And now that both characters are on stealth, we're gonna finish off first the Zombie Iron Man, and then we can go after the Greg. He self-deleted, and that's better because we don't have to make our hands dirty. So let's move on to the next node. We're gonna be use a slightly different team. Okay, so here we go. This is another team that I suggested, and uh, we are going to use Rogue, Red Hulk, Morgan Le Fay, Omega Red, and now we are also going to use uh, Adam Warlock. Adam Warlock is a very important character. He has ability block for two turns on his special. He has two stuns on his basic. He can attack. Uh, he can stun the primary target and one additional target. And uh, with his basic, he can also ap uh, apply bleeds and extend the negative effects, except stun and ability block on the enemies. So in case you can apply some blind or anything like that, Adam Warlock is going to be very convenient in order for you to extend it. Once again, you want to make sure that. Uh, with Morgan Le Fay, use her ultimate in a place where you need to slow the characters 
and uh, you should not use an ultimate in a place where you want to turn the wind of the characters. So that's why I attacked on Deadpool, because I want to slow Wong, and I want to turn the wind Strange Supreme. I'm going to ability block now Strange Supreme. It got resisted. Or no, I, I just used the basic there. I'm saving the ability block. So there I just used the ability block. Now Moon Dragon, she's going to do a special. It doesn't matter because we don't have any buffs that matter. Then I use the Morning of Fate special to get rid of that pool. That pool gives drain to misty characters so you want to get rid of that pool as fast as possible i also mentioned this in one of my videos in the past okay so now we have nakia we have spider-man 2099 and we also have uh, brawn now i killed these enemies so fast that uh, filavel still didn't have their first turn and uh, i thought it was going to cause me some problems because she removed the negative effects from uh, spider-man 2099 but with morgan of Fay, i just destroyed her the basic attack plus the iso weight completely destroyed the spider-man 2099 so as you can see that uh, nakia she's misbehaving she's applying this rub to our character so we are going to use omega red ultimate on the black panther 1 million bc and we are going to destroy that uh, nakia we're going to remove her stealth and then we can just finish her off. Okay, so with Bron, Bron is a very annoying character here, so he might be one of the characters you want to rush to. Because he keeps healing, he keeps getting deflected, he, he keeps just being annoying. You can use the basic of Morin Lafay and completely destroy him. And I think that's going to be one good idea. You definitely want to prioritize that uh, Bron character. With Adam Warlock, we are finally going to apply the ability block to to spider weaver and uh, with that ability block uh, she's gonna apply blitz to us because she's gonna use her basic but that's fine you only need her to be ability blocked for one time with uh, adam warlock is going to revive this is another reason why he's such a good character he's able to revive by himself and now we apply all those negative effects again with the rogue and uh, we destroy spider weaver and that's pretty much it so as you can see, once again, the teams that I suggested work very, very well. And we are able to one-shot all these nodes without sacking, without uh, using anything special. Because, yeah, if you have the list of enemies, you can see what counters them. And then you can decide how you're going to approach the situation. And uh, you don't need test server. You don't need test server in order to figure out what to use. Okay, so with that said, now we are ready to do the last node. We are going to take a look at node number 10, where we are going to use a hybrid team of Bionic Avengers and Wakanda, Wakanda and that will allow you to one-shot the node, because if you use just one team or the other, you might not be able to. Okay, so here we go for node number 10. We have Shuri, we have Black Panther, we have Okoi, we have Vision, and we have V Vision. I actually don't think right now that this is going to be the best team. Uh, we might have to replace Okoi with someone else, uh, maybe from maybe Hulk Buster, and uh, or maybe with uh, Deadlock or something like that. The reason why it's because the the assists from Okoi, they are always cancelled. And even if you get rid of uh, even if you get rid of Echo, it doesn't matter because even after she's dead, the ability of stopping the assists will persist. Therefore, I'm not sure if uh, Okoi is gonna be the best option. We're gonna be trying a few different teams in the upcoming days in order to, to do those big runs of uh, two and three million points. Okay, so as soon as you have the chance, you want to do some big damage there with the vision. And uh, you have to be careful with uh, your ability blocks. You don't want to use it on unnecessary characters. The reason why we are using this hybrid team and the reason why we have uh, Bionic Avengers and Wakanda is because we want, we want both to have the big damage output, but also the ability to control the enemies with the ability blocks. Okay, so as you can see, my Black Panther is just going crazy, destroying everyone on the field. We destroy Echo now, and you'll see that still we are not going to be able to assist with Okoye. Oh, she actually assists here. So I don't understand why she didn't assist on the third wave. Okay, so there we go. She She's assisting now. Is there another one that stops assists? I have no idea. Okay, so we're going to ability block Squirrel Girl. And they're also going to ability block uh, Rogue. 
you definitely want to ability block Rogue because like this, she's not gonna taunt, she's not gonna apply negative effects to you and uh, she's also not going to stun your team and remove all your buffs. This is why you need a hybrid team between Wakanda and Bionic Avengers in order to stop Rogue. Unfortunately there I had offense down on Black Panther so I was not able to destroy the entire team. Otherwise they would just be completely wrecked by now. And uh, then once again we are stuck behind that uh, Miss Marvel taunt. And this is why it's important also to have a few characters with the skirmisher eyes away to remove the taunts and destroy the enemies. So because Rogue is still stuck from the negative effects from V-Vision, I decided to go after Sunfire because that's a big source of damage for the enemy team. And also because he's going to apply defense down to us, which we don't want. Okay, so there we go, we have Kate Bishop trying to destroy us, then we have Spider-Punk with the ill block. I'm just waiting for the ultimate of V-Vision to come back again to flip all of those negative effects into positive effects. And uh, then uh, it's gonna be easy, it's, it's, it's pretty much done. Once again, no private server required to test this out, no test server, nothing like that. Early on, as soon as we have the list of the enemies, we were able to tier a craft which teams we are going to use and once again they work perfectly now in uh, the hardest difficulties of course we probably will have uh, the we are going to use the same teams but it's very likely that we'll use sack teams just to make sure that the enemies don't have all the cooldowns ready and to give us an easier time against uh, the these death scars for archangel so there we go all nodes of uh, the the scourge completed all the theory crafted teams once again i have this on my youtube channel from uh, a few days ago three days ago but i had a video before this one this was when the nodes became official but i had an older video than this one when the nodes were not official yet it was only data mines uh, but still everything matched out with my predictions and that's why i had such easier time doing this that scourge for archangel so yeah guys that's going to be the video i hope you guys enjoy it uh, we'll be back in the future to do more runs on uh, the death scourge but i think this is a good run to start with and you can see how you can easily get uh, 1 million points and uh, these teams as you saw very very solid and uh, if your teams are not as strong as mine because i'm a veteran player use uh, other characters to sack the nodes and uh, you should have uh, you shouldn't have a problem at all and uh, and that's it so once again be we'll be back uh, later we're gonna do one of those big runs two million points three million points maybe uh, but uh, i need some time off uh, for the weekend and uh, i hope you guys enjoyed this run let me know in the comments below if you used my recommended teams and if they also work it out for you and uh, that's all for now i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did Make sure you smash that like button and if you found the information helpful, as always, share it with your friends on Facebook and Discord. If you are new to my channel, make sure you subscribe for more Marvel Strike Force content and I will catch you guys later.